Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about new features inside of FIFA 21 Ultimate Team that are going to affect the market. And I haven't heard a lot of people talking about this, so this might be one of the more important videos to get you ready, get your mind right, and get you thinking alongside how the market could be reacting early on and throughout the rest of the year in FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. Uh, but there's some stuff that they added to the game this year that obviously we haven't got our hands on yet because we're still eight days away from that web app, almost that EA access time frame. The time is getting shorter. The days, the number of days is getting lower. We're almost there, boys, right? Hold on. But there's a lot of stuff people aren't talking about, and there's a lot of market impact that I think we're going to see from some of these changes that they brought into FIFA 21 ultimate team. So we're going to talk through some of those today. A lot of this revolves around the way that FIFA has really been going in the past two years, specifically the second half of FIFA 19, all of FIFA 20. And I think it's going to happen a lot again in FIFA 21 is just the amount of content that we are seeing, the amount of rewards. There's more rewards every year. There's more game modes every year, uh, more opportunity to get better rewards every single year. Even if you don't think there is, honestly, there is. Every single year we've gotten more rewards, more options, more content in terms of gameplay even. And of course promotions and, and cards and packs and all that kind of stuff. But uh, what I want to talk with you guys about today is specifically division rivals and squad battles. The changes to those rewards and especially the tiered amount of coins that you get for each division when you even when you play your placement matches this is big for the first couple of weeks of foot the first week of fifa ultimate team ea access this is going to have market implications for this time frame so that's why i want to talk about it with you guys today we'll also talk about the new team events and the new top 100 or top 200 rewards because that's going to affect the market as well so let's talk about this really quick a lot of you guys have been asking me about this and i want to talk about it right Promotion coin rewards. That's the biggest thing that's going to affect this market in FIFA 21 right off the bat. And this is why it's going to impact it. Well, first of all, you can now qualify and get your placement matches for division rivals through squad battles. So you can play a full 30 matches in squad battles. Now, if you're trying to figure out what you're going to be doing in EA Access, if you're going to play squad battles, if you're going to play division rivals and stuff like that, this is what I would tell you, right? I would play division. I would play squad battles up until Sunday rewards. Play as many squad battle games as you can. Use your 10 hours on that. I think. I mean, if you can play how many? I don't even know how many squad battle games that you can play in one day. But uh, I think if it's 20 minutes a game and there's 10 hours, you can play three games per hour. 20 minutes is a bit long, uh, but that means you could play about 30 games or so. Maybe 30 to 35 games in your 10 hour trial. If you all you do is play games. Uh, that would get you enough squad battle games to get your division rivals placement. Or let's say you played like 20 squad battle games and you played like 10 rivals games and then you played like 10 drafts or something or a few drafts. I don't know. But uh, all I'm saying is the thing here is you want to get your division rivals placement as soon as possible after I think after after those Sunday rewards for EA Access or right around that time frame. Like what I would do is, is I would get a high rank in squad battles and then I would go get your finish off your division rivals placement because the coins, especially if you're a higher tier player, if you're if you're good at the game, division four, division five, even, you know, division six, even you're going to be getting some coin rewards for winning those divisions the first time from your placement matches. And that's the big part that I want to talk about here today, too. So right here this is what it is division promotion reward they show division one and they show ten thousand coins okay this is a prime example of ea sports doing something hey it's cool we're gonna get coins for division one but a lot of us look at this and say 10k for winning division one or getting promoted to division one that's ridiculous that's that's not enough to get promoted to division one you get a one-time reward of ten thousand coins that's awful, all right? I can almost guarantee you this will not be 10,000 coins if you get to Division 1. What I think EA is doing here is they're putting out a new concept so that people are happy, and then people might be a little underwhelmed by the amount of coins that you'd be getting for this. So EA is going to underwhelm and then overperform and put something out that's better. It still could be even better than what it is, but you know what? We'll take it. So I expect this to be higher for Division 1, but this is the big part, right? 
Uh, this change will ensure that your placement matches are better rewarded than before. As your placement is completed, you'll get coins for each division you pass through. So if you finish your placement matches in Division 5, you will get the coins for Division 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5 all at once. Helping you get closer to finding the next player on your for your squad on the transfer market. So this is where the market, market implications come in big time right here. If you get Division 5, Division 4, Division 3, you're getting all the coins from Division 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, whatever division you're at. All those coins are going to be gifted to you when you place in that division, right? So let's say you get Division 5. I think I'm in Division 5 right now. Maybe I'm Division 6. Okay, it's behind my face cam, but I'm in Division 6, right? So if I place in Division 6 right off the rip uh, inside of the start of FIFA, right? I'm going to get 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6 rewards, all right? So that's just going to be, it's probably not going to be a lot of coins, to be completely honest with you. If we look at it and we think about it, it's probably not going to be that many coins because it's just the way that it is. That's how EA work. But you know what? Even if it's 30,000 coins, that's a lot. For the first couple days of FIFA, that's going to impact the market a lot because everybody that gets on and, and even plays squad battles, because squad battles can now qualify you for division rivals placement, if you play all your games, people are going to be getting more coins at the start of the game, and that is going to make the market rise quicker. There's going to be more coins available on the market faster at the start of the game. So what I think we could see here is when EA Access comes out, I think the market rise in those first couple of days could be even greater, especially on meta cards. Meta cards, Ronaldo, Messi, some of your icons, some of the new transferred players or position change players, just the meta cards people are going to have in their teams. If you're a pro player or if you're somebody who is very good at the game, you're going to be getting into a high division right off the bat. You're going to be getting more coins in order that, and, and you're going to go buy some players, right? We talk about that all the time. If it's EA Access time frame, a lot of the meta players continue to go up for the next month. So a lot of those guys are going to go out and start buying players. It's going to push the market even higher, even on the lower tier end too. You know, a guy who's maybe an 83 rated, uh, I think Anthony, Anthony Martial is 84 rated, but that would be, a or Lucas Moore at 83, right? Gareth Bale, 83, wants to watch. My boy, that's who I'm packing with my OTW pack, all right? You watch. Come on, you Spurs. Anyway, um, all I'm saying is I'm seeing that there's a lot of market rise potential, even more than normal, because of this change right here. And I think you're going to see it take place this year uh, earlier than ever. And I think that when EA Access comes out, it's going to be imperative to get as many coins as you can right away so that you can get your coins and invest in some of those meta cards and the market is going to boom because this this is different than people um you know getting uh, buying and selling a player on the market people talked about there's no squad fitnesses this year so that's going to change the market yeah it might change the market a little bit but every time somebody is selling a squad fitness and making coins off of that somebody else on the market is buying that card and losing coins so for every transaction on the market there is an equal effect right coins are being you know gained coins are being taken away for the item so this is not the case though because these are packs and these are coin rewards that are gifted that start from nothing there's nobody that has to spend money to get these packs they're spending their time right so this is value this is coins this is um, supply that is coming onto the market and there's no opposite you know uh degrading or uh other end of the spectrum transaction taking place that's why with the rewards getting bigger and the rewards getting better with the inclusion of division rivals rewards last year and even better. I think they did foot champions rewards were even better. I think maybe I could be talking bad about that and not be correct, but I think you're going to see the prices go up even higher this year. Meta players are probably going to be more expensive off the start because of this, especially and because of the top 100 rewards. When we start getting into foot champions, we have the leaderboards for the top 100 and stuff like that. This is gonna be a change because for your top tier meta players, top tier icons, Ronaldo's, Messi's, Ben Yedder's, the informs that come out that become very, very meta, all of my guys that are top 100 or elite one players, they have more opportunity. There is now every single week, and this is, you know where this is gonna show up? This is gonna show up huge during team of the season. Team of the season is going to be insane, 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 insane with these top 100 rewards because think about the guaranteed 
uh, 11 player team of the season packs that they release for top 100 rewards during the year. Think about all, instead of having 100 people get that pack, you're now going to have 200 people per console be getting that pack, right? That's crazy. That is a lot more supply for the higher tier market. That's just a lot more supply of coins and players on the market as well. And especially for the really meta players, again, like I said, with the icons, you know, I somebody that I think of from FIFA 20 that was very meta that a lot of pro players wanted to use was mid hullet, right? Mid hullet was a guy that people used throughout the year because he was available off the start. He was great for the entire game. And that kind of card is going to be somebody who might be more expensive this year, unless EA, of course, counteract this by adjusting pack weight, even the slightest measure, adjusting pack weight over, you know, millions and millions of packs that will be opened. That would be able to put a little more supply on the market and then also, um, you know, kind of combat that inflation, I guess you could say. So that's something I guess we could think about. And, you know, that's up to EA. We don't know how they do that kind of stuff. Pack weight's dynamic anyway, as far as we know. But that was the main gist of what I wanted to talk about today is that these placement matches and getting your coins from division rivals is going to give you a boost of coins and it's going to boost the market up early game. It's also going uh, to possibly make some cards. You know, I, I always talk about like a Joe Gomez, right? I always talk, talk about Joe. This is my number one example for last year in FIFA of a card that was meta right off the bat and then kind of died because he just wasn't the type of player that people are looking to upgrade in their team right away. And especially when packs start to get opened, he just goes down and he dies in price, right? So a player like Joe Gomez this year was an 83 rated card. He might maintain a higher price because he's, there's not a lot of Premier League center backs. He's very meta with his boost, his upgrade. He's going to be rarer this year and not as easy to pack. But guys that are like 70, 80 rated that are not super duper meta, you're going to see a lot of this, a lot of this, and it's going to be quick. It's going to be quick because as people get more coins, from those division rivals placements, they're going to be hopping on the game. They're going to be um, upgrading their teams faster, quicker, doing more SBCs. And that this could also mean that investing in SBC fodder could be uh, more applicable early on. I mean, just to speak about a couple things we've seen already, IRL, Hyunmin Sun with a four goal game a front runner for player of the month, which that first player of the month is always pretty cheap. The last two years, it's been Lucas Mora and Timu Puki. Both those SBCs turned out to be like 40,000 coins. And a lot of people use those cards in the past two years at the start of FIFA. Imagine a Hyunmin Sun, left mid player of the month, 88 rated or 89 rated to start off FIFA 21. That would be crazy. And it wouldn't be that expensive because EA uh, knows that it's not a ton of people have the crazy amount of coins right off the rip. So that first player of the month is usually, I guess they could change it this year, but that could make SBC fodder more investable this year. Something to think about. This stuff could be moving quicker. If people have more coins, they're more apt to do SBCs. EA could put out more SBCs earlier on. Just a thought, all right? So this is all just kind of theoretical. We're talking about what could happen based on these changes. Um, now it, again, it, a lot of it comes down to EA's pack weight and the way they do things and how many coins we do get from those division rivals. Cause if we're getting like a thousand coins for division 10, 2000 for division nine, 3000 for division eight, and that's only going to add up to like 15 K by the time you get to division five or whatever, that's not going to really be that worth it. But if you're getting 30, 40,000 coins for getting your auto placement at division five, a lot of people will get placed around that range. That's a lot of coins. All right. And especially for the, the upper tier pro players, elite level players in this game, they're going to be getting possibly 100,000 coins from if they get their placement matches and you get in like division three, you might be looking upwards of like 60, 70, I don't know, maybe even 100,000 coins, depending on how generous EA is going to be. So that is a big thing to think about. Last thing is these team events. I could see team events starting off right away in FIFA 21 if they're going to do this. This to me, again, is just going to become a popularity contest because you know, people are going to try to side with one side and what, who's going to be the most popular player. It's going to be the casuals that decide these, in my opinion, 99% of the time uh, because Team Pele or Maradona. I mean, the rewards, I don't know. They better, they have to tell you the rewards right away uh, at the start. Maybe they won't. There's going to be some sort of uncertainty with this as well. But the fact that there are coins or packs involved or new customization items Everybody's going to be looking towards, if they do tell you what the rewards are, they're going to be looking towards which one is better. If there is some sort of edge, 
We'll see what EA do to make it fair. But again, you you want to get you want to be on the winning side, right? Everybody wants to be on the winning side, even though there are consolation rewards. Since when have consolation rewards ever been just as good as winning rewards? Never, right? Number second place doesn't get the same reward as first place, right? Spurs in the Champions League getting runner-up, they didn't win the Champions League. Liverpool did. So the rewards are never the same. So this there's going to be such an emphasis on these team events if they're hyped. If they're cool, if EA does this right, there's going to be such an emphasis on being on the winning team. So, of course, if there's packs or coins involved, we're going to have to monitor that situation. Really think about that and kind of uh, just envision that and, and try to uh, almost like, I guess, guess or figure out which team or which event side is going to be the most hyped up. And then, therefore, the way to go in that mode. So, again... The main part of this video today was honestly just to talk about, of course, these uh, Division Rivals replacements. I talked about it enough. You guys get the gist of it. If you have any questions, drop them down below. But I think this is actually going to impact the market a decent amount. And I haven't heard many people talking about it. But I think it actually is. Now, of course, it does depend on just how many coins EA puts out and gives us. But we'll find that out very soon because we are only eight days away from this game coming out. And then this as well, especially during Team of the, uh, team of the Season. And uh, top 100 rewards all year. It's going to give out a lot more coins to more elite level players. It's going to reward the grind for those guys that are pros. If you're a pro watching this video, you're pumped for this, right? Uh, and I'm pumped for you because a lot of people who got 30 and 0 this year on the PlayStation in the heat of the year didn't even get top 100. There were times where top 100, all top 100 guys were 30 and 0. Of course, if there's glitches or no loss glitches and stuff that's going on, then that's a problem too that EA needs to fix. But it is what it is. Oh, last thing. There's no demo for FIFA 21. I don't know if you guys saw this tweet today, but don't expect a demo. They're using this time to focus our development's team time on delivering the best full game experience for current and next gen consoles. This tells me they're behind. They need a time to catch up because maybe they should have delayed their game a little bit longer than just one week when a lot of other people delayed their games longer than that. I'm just saying I could be wrong. I don't work at EA. I don't know how things are going inside the company, but just my two cents right there. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Food Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.